Alaska is obviously the largest state in the Union. It really is the last frontier. Aviation is the way we access that frontier. For us, airplanes are like pickup trucks or an ATV. To access these remote areas, fishing spots, hunting, beautiful hiking, we use the airplane. And when we teach people to land off airport, that is an area that's not developed, that's pretty much a flat spot in nature where we can land, uh, we give them the access to the wilderness. So it's not just the flying, it's Alaska. Alaska is the last frontier. Aviation is the way to see it. The gist of my course, though, is to give you the mindset of what you should be thinking. And it's being able to assess these off-airport sites. Um, is it soft? And, how soft is it? How hard is it? How big are the rocks? Which way the wind's blowing, which is important for all these airplanes? Um, where's your rising air? Where's your descending air? Is the weather getting better? Is the weather getting worse? What's the risk factor of landing here? Is, are my passengers, or is my student, for that matter, a liability or are they going to be an asset? Maybe somebody older that's feeble, maybe on medicine or something if we got delayed three or four hours, could that be an issue? So I think like that too and that's kind of what I try to instill um, in the way you think when you fly out here in this room, in this uh, Alaska wilderness. You know the exciting thing about landing you know off airport is that it really depends uh, entirely on you using your skills to decide if it's safe because Nobody wants to leave an airplane, you know, uh, on the tundra. So you have to decide if it's safe, uh, you know, and it involves flying down it maybe several times to make sure that the rocks aren't too big. And maybe even just touching down on it and rolling your wheels and then taking off again. Uh, it, it's, it's really, uh, you know, up to you as the pilot to conduct a safe operation in conditions that, you know, are, are very unusual, at least to me, you know, or who was, only made one landing that didn't la that end up at an airport. Hello, my name is Clay Presley. I um, did my first water landing in January 15, 2009 in seat 15D of flight 1549. The first officer on that flight, Jeff Skiles, introduced me to aviation in his 1935 Waco. A year later, after riding in, uh, in his plane, I got my uh, pilot's license and then about three months after that, Jeff invited me to Wisconsin to get my float plane rating. Figure it might as we might as well make it legal. So it was just a, a wonderful experience getting the float plane rating, flying through the lakes in Wisconsin. Right now, I am in Telkeetna, Alaska. And once again, I was invited by Jeff Skiles to take advantage of the float plane rating that we got a couple of years ago. And I thought, what a perfect opportunity to merge the adventures of float plane flying with the adventures of Alaska. It's all rising terrain, so your general tendency is going to be to continue to pull back. Right. So the way to fly level is put yourself a little spot straight ahead of you right. and kind of fly right at it because we don't really have a horizon. We don't have time really to be looking at your edifice horizon. Right. So let's migrate a little more to the right. Okay. There's these really cool waterfalls over here. Okay. Even more so. Right. The mountains, a guy, you tend to fly a little more aggressive than you would in the flatlands. Okay. And so to maximize this turn, we're just going to snake right over here. Uh -huh. This isn't our hazard here. Our hazard is over there, right? Okay. Okay. So now go ahead and be a little aggressive initially. Try to get right after it here. Little back pressure. There you go. See, that's why you want to get aggressive initially, yep. so you don't have to get aggressive later. Right. 
Okay, got it. Got it. Good. You get in some very close spaces, and so you have to be very aggressive with how you fly the airplane, and you don't want to work yourself in to a critical situation. Though everything does work in this plane, we'll be referencing, referencing very little of it. <laughs> the airplane will go where your eyes look. So it's like riding a motorcycle. That's how we do this pretty low. After we flew down the riverbed to uh, gain coordination skills, we practiced assessing uh, spots to land in the river. Uh, in, in Alaska, in the lower elevations, the riverbeds are the primary places where you're going to find a, a safe landing spot. Pretty much my, my uh, theory on rocks are, if you, can phys if you can fly by and physically see and identify a rock, it's too big. It has to look like pea gravel, and it's not going to be pea gravel. It's going to be bigger stuff. The difference between these rocks over here, see the slight difference? Now, those are you'll damage an airplane landing in those rocks. See the slight difference where this is all pretty good, mm -hmm. and those bigger rocks, those are big enough to cause damage to an airplane. And then another thing is, uh, see these waves in the, in the gravel bar? Those are deep enough. They can cause damage to an airplane. So when you're flying over, you really want to be real careful of that train you're landing. Let's look at this mud over here. This would be a good example of, of how you can get uh, in trouble landing. This looks really smooth and nice. You say, oh yeah, land there easy. But then it is what happens is it sticks to the bottom, of the, it sticks to the tires and it'll throw rocks up into the propeller. And again, the propeller and the tail are your two most fragile things. Now in an emergency or, or something like that, yeah, you can get away with it. But these are little things you want to try to avoid when you're landing off airport because we want to protect your airplane. If you want to do this again, and uh, it costs money <laughs> if you damage your plane. And then of course, uh, it's, it's safer. You know, it's, it's, it's just neat landing someplace that's not a runway after all these years of that's all I've ever done, you know? So it's, uh, it's kind of exciting that really, you know, anywhere could be a runway. It's the way it was when airplanes first started, you know, with barnstormers, you know, where they'd find a field to stop and land and put out a banner and start taking people flying. If you're gonna operate off out of here, you're gonna set up a fishing camp or something, go ahead and, and, and mark a nice threshold. Put a couple of big rocks up or put a piece of uh, uh, survey tape up so you don't have to double guess the wind. Or maybe, you, and you can read the wind. When you take off, if you, you can see the tape, the little crosswind. It's not a surprise when you get down there. This might be sticking up out of the sand like this much, but you run over with your tire, and then this part, you know, jumps up out of the sand five feet away into your propeller or into the tail or something. So you don't want to run over any debris uh, if you can help it, of course, obviously if you see it. One of the things you learn is how to assess a safe landing spot by color. So when you fly over now, we're going to look down where we've been landing, and you're going to go, okay, there's the dark color gravel, there's where we were landing, that stuff is too rough and you start slowly memorizing all the different colors and what that looks like. So you'll be able to go out to other gravel bars and go, um, that looks good, that looks good, that doesn't look good, make those decisions. Oh, we also uh, did some mountain flying uh, in, in this experience. It was, it, was, it was entirely different than landing on gravel beds and then flying down rivers. Uh, you learned a lot about uh, how you approach mountains, for instance, because uh, you know the air rushes over mountains like uh, you know water uh, over uh, you know the, the the bottom of a lake. Uh, you can have eddies, you can have currents, you can have rotors. So now, if we have a tailwind, you know you can expect a little rise here and then a little bump on the other side, a little descending here. So you're expecting that. It shouldn't be a surprise to you that we get a little bump here. See, here's a look at we got 400 feet a minute or 300 and something. Right. And now it's going to drop off on the other side. Because we know it. Because we anticipate it. We, we know where our rising air is, our descending air. And, that, and, that's, and that's part of being a, a bush pilot, is thinking far ahead of the airplane, thinking of the risks that uh, are out there and being prepared for those risks. So how long of a hike out would it be from here? Oh, you'd probably spend a week if a bear didn't get you. The best thing to do is to go ahead. You know, what I've learned about uh, Alaska bush pilots is that the successful bush pilots share a lot of what we do as airline pilots. They, they assess the risk and they don't take risks that are unwarranted given the conditions. Remember, we're always trying to talk our way out of it. We're not trying to talk our way into going in there. So it's a whole different mindset. You think, oh, we got to get in there, we got to get in there. No, it's actually opposite when you uh, 
start pioneering these new places, you're thinking, oh, it's too short. Oh, it's not a good avenue of escape. Oh, it's getting late in the day. You're, you're, you become very, very pessimistic, and I found that out when I was with, uh, when I first came here in the early 70s, I was very fortunate to be able to talk to some of the old, old bush pilots that were still kind of lingering around late in their lives, and uh, I found out they weren't old, brave uh, people. They uh, were very careful, very uh, almost timid in a sense. When you touch down on the tundra, it's not going to be a uh, flat, smooth surface like we're used to on our normal runways. It's going to be sloping either up, down, off to the side. And, and let me tell you, even the rocks that you can land on, they're pretty rough on, with those tundra tires going across them. It's, uh, it, it was a pretty jarring landing. Well, it was kind of rough. Well, it seems rough, doesn't it? Caribou on the, is that, yeah, on the rock down there. A couple of, oh yeah. Big horns on that one. But you can see the access is so awesome. Yeah. To be able to come out there and land there and hike around or camp. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Flying up here and flying in the bush here in Alaska ranks, ranks very high in, in my, you know, aviation experience. It's, uh, you just, you really, combining things that we should all be doing, which is just raw basic flying skills with, with learning uh, judgment and decision making uh, ability out here in this most beautiful country that you could imagine. It's a wonderful experience. For the people that, that enjoy flying and, and the people that have always wanted to see Alaska, put the two together on your vacation. You need to come up and when you come up, be sure and and take advantage of both adventures. I mean, flying itself is an adventure, seeing Alaska is an adventure, put the two together and you've got twice the experience.